For the past two decades, Miles Wooten has been fighting a private battle. At home in Toowoomba, he tries to focus on the future rather than the past. And that's the way I like to look at it. There's a lot of negative things. I've got stuff going through my mind now that I can see like it's just happened. Now, for the first time in 24 years, he's about to return to Rwanda. He's not sure whether the journey will give him peace or nightmares. As soon as I found out I didn't sleep for a couple of nights, it was very mixed. As with PTSD, your sleep pattern's mixed anyway. Today, Kigali is almost unrecognisable. It's the peaceful capital of a thriving nation. Miles is full of nervous energy. It's taken Miles 20 years to talk to us about it, and we haven't asked that, that much because we were a bit afraid of asking him what the answer was going to be. So um, it's only been the last three or four years we've actually started talking about it as a family. In 1994, more than 800,000 people were murdered in the Rwandan genocide. Ethnic hatred exploded into a frenzy of bloodletting. Australia sent more than 600 peacekeepers. They've been by definition deployed in some of the worst environments um, after some of the most atrocious massacres and had to provide, to, to bear witness to that and provide support and assist societies recover. Miles Wooten was only 21 years old. He was sent to this Kigali hospital on a horrific mission. It was his job to scrub the mortuaries where unspeakable crimes had been committed. To get them back up and operational, because they were absolutely filthy from the war, that was one of the places that they started with killings. Actually you had torture execution rooms in there, which was evident. So United Nations is just a mission here. Miles wears his service with pride. So that was the dates. In, in 94. 94 and 95. So that's the dates that I was here. The peacekeepers played an important part in helping to rebuild Rwanda. We are a successful mission and the proof is in the pudding. It's great. It's just bounced back and absolutely brilliant. Many of the former peacekeepers are very proud of their service, but here in Rwanda there are mixed views. Some Rwandans are grateful, but others are angry and still believe that the international community did too little, too late. Venust Karasira can't forget the genocide. He lost his arm, but kept his life. He was one of the few to survive when 3,000 people were killed here at Nyanza in April 1994. I tried to hide under the, the, the corpse, the dead corpse. Uh, and then uh, I found myself uh, surviving. Violence has broken out in the Central African Republic of Rwanda. It started off, it was just the army doing the killings. Now it's spreading to everyone. What happened here was made into a harrowing film. There are people at the gate. Tell them to open the gate. This is a military base, not a refugee camp. Belgian peacekeepers abandoned school. thousands of civilians who were then killed by members of the Interhumway militia. Those who survived are still angry at the betrayal. If you call yourself a peacekeeper and then there is no peace, what are you keeping? The first Australian peacekeepers didn't arrive in Rwanda until August, four months after the genocide, a fact that still haunts some of the veterans. That's not our fault that we got here late. Stupid governments, stupid UN. I hate the UN. Um, focus your anger onto other parts. I, I understand. In a way, I'm angry we got here late. We could have we helped. Um, we could have stopped a lot of it. Remembering the dead has become part of living for the people of Rwanda. This memorial holds some of the country's most brutal truths. For Miles Wooten, it's a disturbing place, especially the images of children. And seeing the photos which brought some of that back and how, how, how do you do that? Um, not only how do you do that to a person, how do you do it to a child, like six months old, how do you do that? What he was seeing is incomprehensible, how the humans can do 
that to other humans. And um, yeah, I, I, I struggle to think what those diggers went through. I was only 10 years old and had a promise from the UN peacekeepers. It's a heavy burden for the veterans. One in three peacekeepers developed mental illness after returning to Australia. We need to recognise that whilst that's different in some elements to a combat experience as such, its impact is significant and our onus of obligation to support peacekeepers in every aspect of their recovery. Some Australian veterans from other wars still refuse to acknowledge the service of those who went to Rwanda. For Miles Wooten, that's what hurts the most. The job I did, we cleaned up a war zone. You can't think of that. Everyone else went to war and walked away. We cleaned it. Come back and see me when you've cleaned one, mate. I'm very proud.